Good morning, Nation. Good morning. Nicole Bernard. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I feel like I have some energy this morning. I, I, I think I got a lot on the plate, and you don't even know what we're talking about today because while I feel like I'm organized, I haven't got you organized today, so I'm sorry about that. However, today, Nicole Bernard, I stumbled through LinkedIn yesterday, and I found this exceptionally incredible post. And you know that we're here to help people, right? Uh-huh. The morning alarm clock, the accountability clock. Keith and Nicole just showing up to help you get out of bed and get, get moving. So Sandra McCall posts this carousel, how she added 1,000 LinkedIn followers in a week. Wow. How? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to dig into that. How Sandra McCall, it's at Sandra McCall, how she added a thousand new followers in a week so she published how she did it and i was i was reading it yesterday and and i even commented on her post nicole i'm like hey um you have just given me the topic of the morning tomorrow because anybody doing that i think we all want to learn yeah totally right yeah Uh, i had a wonderful guest live in the lab yesterday at noon dr carter You know, Nicole, I got a friend down the road named Sarah Carter, and this doctor is not Sarah Carter, but yet I keep, it's Dr. Stevie Don Carter. It's no different than when I first met you and I introduced you not as Nicole Bernard. Oh, yeah. What did you introduce me as? I can't, I don't even remember now. Yeah, Nicole Brown. Oh, that's right. I don't know if I had some OJ on the brain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I didn't even think of her. Sorry, but that's, that's, that's yeah. I mean, I remember watching that trial in high school, anyway, and the car chase and all that, but. Oh my goodness, isn't that uh, a blast from the past? Mm-hmm. So, so Dr. S- uh, Dr. Stephen Don Carter was in the lobby yesterday, and we talked about communication, and the power of empathy, the power of communicating, and the importance of grace in the workplace. Do you practice grace in the workplace in NB marketing? Uh, I try to, yeah. I mean, very much with my team, but I also try to yes. remember it for myself as well sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yeah. It seems to be a skill that we maybe don't often as humans pay attention to, do we? Yeah, no, I don't think we- so. We often forget it. So we had a good chat about that. She talked about the importance of grace in the workplace. So I want to bring that up this morning, share a little clip from the show yesterday. I think it's a good reminder for those that are starting their day or ending their days. Like, yeah, you know, a little bit of grace is great. Maybe, yeah. maybe when I'm coming into a meeting today, Nicole, with, uh, with Joe Smith and, and Joe had a, a horrible morning or a horrible night or for whatever reason, and Joe's off. Yeah. But yet maybe sometimes we're quick to, be in a situation, get angry with Joe, get frustrated with Joe. When in the reality, Joe has had a bad moment. And as a human being, we have to, I think, find cues, ask for clarity to make sure that uh, I'm understanding Joe's in a bad spot. And it's just, it's one moment out of a thousand moments of of Joe's time with me, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I agree. I even like this weekend when I was running towards the end and I was like barely hotly walking and I was like, I will never like if I see someone struggling or whatever, I have no idea what their story is, you know, and so because I was was like, I look ridiculous out here right now. But yes, again, we have no idea what people are going through. That's a wonderful statement. We have no idea what somebody's going through. And as you were, you know, you chose to do your your David Goggins challenge. Mm -hmm. You chose to hobble and stumble your way through it. You chose those moments to put yourself mm-hmm. through it for sure yet to your point there's others that don't have that choice and we sometimes will get frustrated if we're driving behind them somewhere or walking around them and they're and somebody's maybe moving slowly than one else is and you're like damn it right. but in reality we not might not know the reason why yeah. i find myself nicole in those situations this is a good morning chat actually good coffee chat I find myself in those situations when I'm driving and if I'm behind or around somebody who might be a little bit older than I am and if I'm thinking about them as my mother or my father, mm-hmm. how would I feel if somebody in my shoes was treating them like I'm about to treat them? Yeah. So you that's know what I mean? a great way to look at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
right? So if I'm here, so if, so if you were an elderly driver next to me and I was frustrated at you because you weren't, you were driving like a, I don't know, just not like I'd like you to drive and I'm cussing in my head and I'm going to be an idiot to you. Think to myself, yeah, but what if, if, I, if I'm looking at you and thinking, what happens if that was my mom? Is she feeling scared right now because she's elderly and she's nervous driving? Right. Mm-hmm. It bothers me. It bothers me thinking about my mom scared. Yeah. Oh, well, that's tough. Yeah. Oh, uh, segueing. Did you guys go car shopping yesterday? We did. Did you land on one? Well, we landed on one. Yes. Uh, Carter and Keith did some car shopping. We had time for for one. We we stopped. So we went to uh, half a dozen dealerships. Uh, Cartsy uh, looked at uh, looked at a few of them. We took one for a drive. Uh, a Kia Sportage, 2017 Kia Sportage. Ooh. So that that is on the uh, the the list of of uh, of potentials. And then wow. today we don't have any time because Carter is in the uh, next game of his hockey championship series. So that's that's kind of a, a busy a busy wow. day. How many are left? Uh, so it's a best of five series. They're down two games to O. So today could be the potential oh. last game. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully not though. Hopefully they'll rally. This is true, yeah. So I told Carter, he's the captain. I said, "Hey, Carter, you gotta, you gotta get the boys wrapped around the head that uh, you need to beat the team tonight so they can come back to Winnipeg to earn the victory. Don't just hand it to them." Right, totally. Right. So, so I'll, t- so that'll, so it's gonna be late night tonight. So tomorrow morning, I, you know, Uncle Keith might be a little foggy, but gonna go watch that game. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, yeah, tomorrow we're gonna go and and uh, continue the car shopping, Nicole, with the goal being. By end of day tomorrow, end of week spring break, uh, Mr. B has himself a new set of wheels. Oh, that's awesome. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. You commented yesterday. You sent me a text. Yeah. Keith's going to be a day full of memories. <laughs> yes. A day of memories of Keith cutting a check. Yeah. Traumatic memories. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. How was your day yesterday after uh, after our show ended? Uh, it was great. Uh, what was yesterday? Monday? Um, I, tried, I went out for my first run post challenge so now i'm working into the you know the, the real yeah. ultra marathon um, yes running. yes my knee, my knee really hurt so i'm not, oh. not excited about that so uh anyway. are, are you surprised though after your uh, extensive like run over on the weekend i'm thinking that maybe there would be some or is it inflammation soreness or what is it maybe i don't know yeah it wasn't sore it straight up was painful every once in oh, a while yeah. so um and my heel hurt so obviously i think they're connected so i don't know I'm going to have to do some Googling later and maybe call our doctor. Just be like, I mean, I think it's probably just, yeah, inflamed or sore or I don't know. Yeah. Still, you know, it's probably traumatized as well. (laughs) So um, Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it was great. And then uh, just worked. And we are getting our exchange student this week. So we're kind of getting everything for her. So that's exciting. Uh, That's exciting. Yeah, my kids are home too. So. um, Yes. yeah, we talked about that yesterday. Spring break, kids being around, and it just adds a whole I, to to all those parents I know that are tuning in. Kids around, it's it's. Do you like spring break? Do you wish they're going to school? Is it a mixture of everything? I don't know. It's maybe just a mixed bag. Yeah, it totally is. I mean, it's funny because like we homeschooled forever, so the, this oh, is yeah. like our second year like in school. Uh, yes. So it kind of brings back those memories, which is fun. Um, but yeah, I forget how inefficient I am when they are at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, but that's hey, it's uh I know I was talking to the kids yesterday, they were like, oh, I'm just gonna take it easy and, and you know, some days you know, just not moving was, yeah. was kind of the goal too, right? So totally. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah I love it. So because like yeah, my son just finished basketball, my daughter's going into track, so it's kind of a nice little rest period. So it's great. That's exceptional. That's exceptional. Uh, all right. So listen, let's uh, let's take a break here in a second, but before, and then we'll come back. And I want to dig into Sandra McCall's uh, uh, how she added a thousand LinkedIn followers. I want to do it with you, uh, and then we'll dig into a couple of the segments from yesterday's show with uh, with Doctor um, Doctor Carter, with Doctor uh, Stevie Don Carter, and then today, Nicole, today live and live at noon Central Time, I have Alicia. Butler Pierre. She's the founder and CEO of Equilibria Inc. She's a top 50 global operational excellence thought leader. She's the author of the world's first book on business infrastructure, adjunct instructor, Purdue University, and top 2% podcaster. Wow. And a lean six sigma. Yeah, and a lean six sigma. Oh, 
okay. When I first worked with someone like that, I told my husband, I was like, yeah, I mean, he must be like really like into Taekwondo. And my husband was like, what? I don't think that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to Google it. And yes, it clearly has nothing to do with martial arts. <laughs> I love it. You know, that comment reminds me. I got to tell you something. I had somebody come to me. Wow, well, it was Lauren, my wife, Lauren. She's like, you know, Cole is awesome. She comes across so relatable. She used the term cute in, in a very relatable way to other women, other people out there. Like, she's like, she reminds me of Kelly Ripa. Oh, okay. okay, awesome. Yeah, so she's like, I saw you guys show you. I should up on the screen. We have, you know, in the gym back here. I had it up on the screen, and she's like, the way it looks, and I see Nicole chatting away and laughing, and you guys like, you know, she's like, you guys like Cali Re- uh, Ripa, and she's like, I'm like, am I Regis? No, like, you're Ryan Seacrest, aren't you? I mean, you're- I, I, exactly. It. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's that's it. I'm Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. Speaking of Ryan Seacrest, I was at Mom and Dad yesterday and turned on uh, turned on the voice. Oh, and Carson da- Carson Daly is the host of that. Oh my God! I haven't. I mean, I remember watching him after a height like school and on like. On yes. TV. Remember Total Request Live? Like that. Is really dating us here, but. Don't want to get too far into this because I want to have grace. <laughs> but I turned on the voice, and Carson Daly was on screen, and I had to look not once, not twice, maybe three times. I was like, oh, okay. All right, good. That's awesome. I left it there. Yeah, I, uh, you know, we all. Uh, I met Carson in Austin years ago. Actually, I was in Austin, Texas, for an event and shook hands with Carson Daly, a much younger version of Carson Daly from TRL. I was maybe back in the old M M&M and M days and yeah. Christina Aguilera. But yes, you know, we all we all age. We all age gracefully. <laughs> it's very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imague because I, I saw him on a show. It might have been The Voice. We haven't watched it in a few years, but a few years ago, and same thing. I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Things have changed. But. Yes. Yeah. I also found myself yesterday too when the show was on. <laughs> this is kind of our pop segment, cult segment, I guess. Pop culture segment <laughs> was that uh, uh, I looked around the demographic of the room I was in. I was with my folks and my my aunt, who's you know in her seventies, and I looked around the room and I'm like, right. That's why this television show still is existing. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Because it right? used to be like skewed younger, right? I think so, yeah, I think so. But it's on linear television. It starts at a certain time. I found my mom. Hey, mom, if you're listening right now, I found my mom explaining to my aunt that you know she didn't watch it at seven, Nicole. She watched it on the nine o'clock West Coast version. Oh, well, because yes. she has like like the, the the time shifting back in the right? olden days, of, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, not streaming, Nicole. Not play it when you want to play it. But yeah. I'll watch it at nine, a couple hours later. That is hilarious. I, I mean, that's um, awesome. Like, I just I didn't realize people that like people still watch like <laughs> that. But it makes sense. It's like you know, older or like our parents, you know, watching. Yes. You know, they're creatures of habit. That's what they've always done. So. Yes. Yes. Well, and in and in a in a again a bizarre, coincidental, ironic way, it's. You know, there's 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 pieces of this show that reach back into that time world of of comfort. That so to me, this show like just craft dinner. Mm-hmm. You dig into it; it's going to give you some goodness, going to get make you feel pretty good. It, it, it might make you feel empty a few hours later, but that's why you got to tune in at noon with me at Live and Alive to rejack you up. Mm-hmm. Speaking of jacking up, I need to show you something yesterday that made me laugh. Um, I so see Marty fit Chris Martin guests of Live in the Lab, just back when, you know, back in the early days when we were starting out and maybe just a few days after you there. So Chris Martin posted something yesterday on on Instagram, and I ha- <laughs> I gotta show you this, man. This is the funniest thing. Um, let me just pull this up here. All right, so here's C. Marty Fit. Let me just mute the music here. So What is this, bro? They need to be Let's banned just from hit refresh here and check this out. Okay, hold on. So here's so here's C Marty Fit. What the hell is this? 
you sitting here wondering why the back ain't getting unbig and why your back keep getting bigger. This is the answer. You sitting here worried about a concert trying to get your dance on, and this rap group was popping in 2006, and your back bigger than it was in 2006. This is crazy. You got to lock in and focus and work out with some type of intensity. This right here ain't going to do it. Show me the result of the backs that got unbig from dancing with young bloods. Oh no, man, what is this, bro? They need to be banned from gyms, and you need to be banned for gyms from signing up for this, bro. This is crazy, dog. Man, look, I'm tired. You you gotta put the work in. Stop trying to get a shortcut. It is what it is, bro. This ain't the way. I'm sorry. Yeah, have some fun, but get this bullshit out of here. He's not wrong. Hey, that was awesome. <laughs> Oh, see, Marty Fit. I reached out to him last night. Still for joining us in the show to have some fun with that. But I yeah. saw that and I could not. I must have watched it a dozen times. And I'm like, I gotta share this with Nicole and I gotta share this with Business Athlete Nation because that will get your day going. <laughs> it was Nicole's busy laugh coughing over there. That's funny, man. So to, to those that are listening, there's a video here on Instagram that uh, Chris posted. It's, uh, it's in a gym and. They banned Youngbloods, 2000 band. The hip hop rappers showed up in the gym. <laughs> they started <laughs> rapping. And why? Like, that's my question is why? Like, and yeah, I haven't heard Young, like heard that name in a really long time. <laughs> why? Exactly. Why? All right. So I'm going to put that into the post. You guys will get that later today. I invite you to check it out. It is funny, man. It is absolutely effing funny. Chris Martin, Young Bloods performing in a gym. I've never seen that before, but it was and there's that one girl's face just determined, just, just rocking it out. Next thing you know, in sync live on the on the Planet Fitness tour across North America, right? Let's hope not. <laughs> Let's hope not. All right, Keith and Nicole joining you guys on Tuesday morning here. Mornings in the lab. We're going to get out of here for a minute. Going to refresh some coffee. Um, you know how I spilt my water on our show oh, yesterday? Yes, yeah. A golden show at noon. Happens again. Oh, no. <laughs> but I had a towel here with me from the morning. So I was like, oh, I'll just drop it on the floor and clean it up again. <laughs> All right, we're going to break for a minute. We're going to come back with how Sandra McCall, she has no idea we're talking about her, which I love because I'm going to create this content. We're going to tag her in it and we're yeah. promoting it. Hell, Sandra McCall, I hope I'm saying your, name last, uh, your last name properly. How Sandra McCall added 1,000 LinkedIn followers in a week. I have a 40 some odd page PDF she made. I'm going to show you how she did it. All right, okay. so we'll be back in a minute.
All right, we're back. Mornings in the lab with Keith and Nicole. Week three, Nicole. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm going insane. I'm like, I swear to God, this is like the week four, but I haven't had enough time to go back to our text to look to prove me wrong, but I will today. <laughs> So I hope you all are seeing the chemistry come alive here on the air. So Keith and Nicole are in week three. We're on show 12, our 12th hour together. And just so you all know how we operate. So we have really been good, I think. I, I And I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I want to talk more with you about other things along the day to keep growing our business together. But we've been really diligent at at uh, at keeping our conversations to this hour together, and it's been it's been quite enjoyable because I'm getting to know you, building this chemistry chemistry on the air in front of everybody. But, I get, but yesterday, nation, we had a little debate. Nicole's like, "Yeah, this is week four. But no, I think it's actually week three. I think it's only show eleven. Like, no, I think it's week four. I'm like, all right, <laughs> give me some time. Yes. <laughs> Well, the old, but hey, listen, Nation, Nicole's over on the West Coast there. So, you know, it's two-hour time difference. Maybe maybe math is a little different. And I'm in Canada. She's in the U.S. Maybe with the conversion. Different. Oh, they do math differently now. My daughter's in eighth grade. She's like, can you help me? I'm like, nope. I yeah, literally exactly. cannot. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> That's exactly it. It wasn't my strong subject ever, but even more so now. Like, <clears throat> Oh man, so funny! All right, so let's talk about Sandra McCall. I uh, oh, hold on. Before we do that, though, I got to tell you something. So I don't know how to feel about this. Two dads in a lab trying to be two percent better with Keith and Die. Debuted number five in Afghanistan yesterday. Oh my god! In the parenting, in the parenting oh, yeah. category. Kind of random. Why Afghanistan? <laughs> what do we take from that? I, people are listening. I mean, worldwide. So. so, two dads in a lab, top five in Afghanistan. So I don't know. So Di Manuel, we're we're saying the right things for people to resonate with us in, in Afghanistan. So there's something to, to be said for that. Yeah, I mean it is great. That's all. I think so. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get into how Sandra McCall grew her 1,000 followers in a week, so that you can learn, I can learn. And our audience can learn how you can do this. Because, again, my goal here with the show is to get people to learn. So let's do this. Let's do a share screen. We're going to do a present, uh, a share screen. We're going to go window. We're going to do this here. And <laughs> this is this is pretty exceptional. I was uh, – the time the time people put into things yeah. is I love it. Yeah. She makes magazines. Like I'm on the Sandra, I'm on the Sandra McCall fan fan, uh, fan club right now because I, I after I found this I'm like oh okay so this is what she creates she's a creator and I go back and look at her content Nicole and she makes magazine carousels. That's cool. I like it's that. absolutely brilliant. So you know, well, they perform really well too. It doesn't LinkedIn like love those? I, yes, I've I've been experimenting with carousels and they do perform well. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm certainly going to continue making more of them. Uh, there. Well, look at this. Like, let's just go through this. So, Sandra McCall. She she wrote she wrote a forty some odd page doc, forty four pages. And we're gonna go through it here, which is how she grew her followers one thousand new followers in a week, and led her to discover her authentic style and identity. So, she breaks down her relationships, Nicole. So, she follows follows the influencers, engage with influencers to crack LinkedIn growth and cock a doodle. I'm gonna tell you something I've learned too, and, and again, I know this, but you know how you know something, but until you, yeah, get a little validation. Like, yeah, and and or or we're sometimes horrible to practice what we preach. Yeah, it's true. I have learned so much since I've been back into the social world of content and on LinkedIn, Nicole Bernard. How important engagement is more so than actually posting content. Yes, it's true, and I think that. <clears throat> So many people forget that aspect. It's like, oh, I'm putting it out, I'm putting it out, I'm putting it out. But it's like, it really wants you to see it like a two-way street. Like, it's social. They want you to be social, you know? And so, and then the engagement piece is just huge because people can get to know you, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, when you think about posting, it's really about look at me, look at me, look at me, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then we and we post our content up. You know, okay, you, we we create something, we post it, and then we keep our fingers crossed that a bunch of people are going to like it. And, and that's how we have all been conditioned, right? Let's yeah. create something. Let's hope somebody likes it. Uh, but again, doing some testing and watching, especially now that I'm a full time creator, especially here on LinkedIn, uh, the days that I post and aren't and I don't engage very much, <clears throat> it's it's clear as day, Nicole. There's mm-hmm. just nothing happening. Yeah. Uh, oh, my browser just. I got to do a refresh here. Hang tight. Do, do, do. There we go. Um, so it really clear to me how, you know, without engagement, uh, you're kind of just wasting time. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> Two things I've learned, Nicole, and I'll offer up to, to, to LinkedIn Nation, Business Athlete Nation is, Posting is one thing, which is great. So one thing, so another thing I've learned, Nicole, just posting every now and then, and then walking away is you might as well not even post. Are you talking to me? <laughs> I, I've been there with I you. I'm really called out right now. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been there with you. I think a lot of us have been there. Yeah. Right? Which is we feel like, okay, I posted something this week and then I leave and then I walk away and run away and don't do nothing else. It's like, okay, well, I, I might as well not have posted that. Yeah, that's um, true. You know, it's 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 difficult to stay diligent with it, but it really, if you want to have success in these platforms, you have to post regularly. More importantly, you have to engage regularly. Mm-hmm. It's true. Make, make others feel good about their posts, mm-hmm. and then they come back and like your posts. Yeah, it's true. It's it's tr- it's really true. So if you're listening right now and you're wondering how you can get started, or if you need some help with that, come knock on my door, Nicole's door. We can help you. Absolutely. Well, Nicole can't because she doesn't do it herself. So I have started doing it over the last few months. So I can. If you reached out to me months ago, I would not have been able to because I was like, when Nicole I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> all joking aside, if you need some help with this, Nicole can help you. I can help you uh, become regular on LinkedIn, posting mm-hmm. daily, engaging daily. And I'm not talking to Nicole about posting a thousand comments a day or posting a thousand pieces a day, just right. regularly getting consistent. Right. Yeah, so that's true. Let's, let's let's continue with uh, with Sandra. So she gets into very visual, fo- unfollows all the influencers. So here's some here's some stuff. Right. Uh, <laughs> let's get into what she does behind the scenes. So I found this fascinating. So she mm-hmm. breaks down her tactics in her circle. She goes three times a week. Friends, people have high interest in people supporting me, and beyond loyal for many months. I I interact with them Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So she's like, here's my inner circle. So for example, you'd be my inner circle, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm engaging with Nicole Monday, Wednesday, Friday, die manual, like my, 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 my network. I'm engaging in the inner circle. We're going to engage all the time. You're going to engage with me. It's going to be our strategy. And then the second circle is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which have some loyal, lower loyalty, lower interest. Maybe I'm interested in your, what you're doing. You're maybe interested in what I'm doing, but we're kind of just working on something, Mm -hmm. right? The third circle, I liked this one because we just talked about this moments ago. It's reaching out to those people that maybe are, yeah, kind of like what Nicole's doing. I see her popping in once a week. Hmm, she's, un- she's unpredictable. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if she's if she's digging in here consistently, mm-hmm. right? So, so then she joins my 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 once a week circle, which I'm go- my goal with Nicole is to move her from the once a week circle to the inner circle. Mm-hmm. Really cool strategy. And and you yeah. see here, she's a guy on my inner circle. I'm consistent in interacting with them on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. On my second circle, I'm consistent on Tuesday, Thursdays. And on my third circle, I do it whenever I have the energy. Mm-hmm. Love uh, that because <clears throat> she strategically put some thought behind her engagement tactics. Mm-hmm. Not just posting for the sake of posting. <clears throat> Check this out. Again, talk about brilliant. She breaks down her methodology and her analysis. She says, I analyze the 10 to 15 posts and I see who's engaging with me. And then I score them. She breaks it down to scores. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's what I said. I'm like, oh, okay. That's pretty impressive. And then she goes, I add an extra five points. This person was consistent in the previous month. Extra points. This person is a friend or not. And extra minus points. If I have or don't have some interest in them. Mm-hmm. So again, Nation, if you're listening to this and you're wondering how all this works, I'm going to put it up there. I'll put it up here in, uh, inside, uh, in, our, in our inside uh, BAPL newsletter. You guys can have it delivered to you. It'll, I'll make it accessible for you guys to have a look at this. But Sandra McCall did a wonderful job breaking down. She's giving you all the instructions here. 
Yeah. Like actually all the instructions. It's step by step. step by step. She goes into methodology and analysis part two. Anyone who never engaged with me and I have a high interest in developing a relationship gets 10 points right away in the inner circle priority. So that to me says, I want to engage with Keith, but he's never engaged with me, but I want to get into his inner circle. So mm -hmm. I'm giving him a 10. It's a priority, right? Mm -hmm. Part three of her analysis, after I engage with new people, anyone whose communication does not align with my values or beliefs, there is no admiration, or if a person's appear and does not return the support, I'll score them zero points on the next analysis and exclude them from my engagement list. Wow. Yes. So this next slide talks about what keeps her or sane, organized, and focused with a clean conscious. She has two objective measurements and she has two subjective measurements. And she measures everything on engagement, loyalty, friend, and interests. And she uses Notion to track it all. So I find this fantastic. And here, here she goes with her opinion piece. The creator community is the most engaged and active community on LinkedIn. Weekly, she supports over 200 people, 100 on the days that she posts. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Others average around 30 comments a day. The more you support, the more you, the more support you get. And, you know, we just talked about that for the last few minutes, but she really mm -hmm. clearly lays it out. The engagement system must be sustainable for you in the long run. And without the buy-in and mutual support from other creators, I don't, she says, I don't see how anyone who's just establishing a LinkedIn presence slash personal brand can build an audience. Yeah. Does she say how long this takes her on a daily average and uh, or monthly when she like sits there and scores them? She, I don't know if she does. We'll, we'll get, okay. I, I don't know if she saw that or not, but, uh, I, my goal here, Nicole is to get, get Sandra on the show. I want to get Sandra. Mm -hmm. on the show. I want to break this down with her and, and offer a platform to share her, her experience. Uh, she's yeah. from the EU. So right now it'd be, it would be late, late in the day for her. So if she's seen this, we're like, with shaking, Sandra, I know it's not morning for you, but here, we're, we're bringing you to the masses here in North America. She also talks about, Nicole, niching <clears throat> down. Mm -hmm. We hear about niche down, niche down, niche down. You should niche down on the industry. But here's what I loved. <laughs> Yay. I was about to say, I've never niched down. I was, I was interested to see what her answer was. Yeah. So she goes, she's refused to niche down to fit letter, but all different ways you can niche <laughs> down. This yeah. to me is awesome. Yeah. We're so taught to niche on one skill. Mm -hmm. But what about targeting a local area? What about serving one industry? Mm -hmm. What about using your personal experience? Yeah, I love and, solving a key problem. That one to me is awesome. Yes, pick one problem and solve it and just yeah. over and over and over and become the expert in that one problem. Yeah. Have a unique style, uh, you know, master a tech platform, other specific product market to demographic. So I, uh, the many different ways you can niche down. And I think that's really what the, the, the message here is in, in, in the creator world we're in is pick a topic, own it, mm -hmm. talk about it ad nauseum, become an expert in it. How everyone's niching down, you know, she gave some examples here, you know, uh, a, 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 a smelly cat, a startup <laughs> cat for a startup cat business created by cats. Mm -hmm. Well, do you remember that song from Friends? Like I do. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. Right? That's awesome. She talks about niching down. Um, she talks about her, the nemesis strategy, how she has a unique style, follows certain values or beliefs, a technique where a brand positions itself against competitors. This strategy is often used in markets where there are dominant players and our market and new entrants to disrupt the status quo by challenging the leaders. So the purpose, so she uses the, the, the purpose of the nemesis strategy, how she differentiates herself in the marketplace, right? Attention grabbing, uh, speaking out against, not against, but, but, but presenting a contrarian view. Yeah. Than what somebody else might have. Mm -hmm. Right. So she gets into that. Um, love her visuals. So do I, yeah. Right? Uh, I like this. And she goes, please, <clears throat> the most shady people slap kindness on everything like it's like it's, like it's it's ketchup. Uh, creating an enemy that is not very kind, shame on you. I, I This resonated with me because yesterday on my show with uh, Dr. Carter, we talked about kindness. And you and I talked about kindness yesterday a little bit. And I talked about you know kindness being my superpower, how kindness outlasts controversy. Mm-hmm. 
you know, controversy comes and goes real quickly, Nicole, but you know, I'll take kindness every single day because I will outlast you with my kindness. Yep. Right. Uh, way cooler. <laughs> be, I think so. Be nice. Yeah. be nice. Don't be a jerk. That's what we tell our kids. Like that's like the one rule in our house. Like don't be a jerk to anybody. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's so simple. So cliche, yeah. but so real. No. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. You know, uh, here's some famous nemesis strategies that, uh, that Sandra calls out. Obviously, the Apple Mac versus PC strategy, mm -hmm. right? Remember that one? Yep, totally. And obvious, and why not, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, <clears throat> I've done the same thing here in the lab. Live show versus podcast. Yep. Right, purpose, a purposeful marketing decision when I, when I created. So to anybody in the marketing industry, you'll kind of you will not kind of you will you can understand what i've what i've done with our shows live in the lab with keith billis it's not live in the lab it's live lab with keith billis there's the branding we have a branded time slot and then we regardless if it means anything or not especially in 2024 because people don't really sit on time slots it yeah. still creates that awareness every single day in your feed you know the show's popping up at noon or our show's popping up at 7 a.m it's that repetitiveness right yeah but then <clears throat> The other side of it is positioning ourselves, especially doing this live show, Nicole, we are the anti-podcast. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Mm -hmm. We package it up and distribute it later. So those that are recording, so it's just having some fun with it, right? So Apple versus PC, Pepsi versus Coke, uh, Patagonia versus all the traditional apparel companies. I like that. The Don't Buy a Jack campaign. Yeah. We'll launch that back in 2011. That's cool. That mm -hmm. was really cool. Buy a Patagonia, right? I don't remember that one. I'm going to have to go Google that. Yeah, that was, uh, it was, it was neat. Cause it was like, don't buy a jacket. And they just, they, they, so it was like throwing the whole idea of don't buy this jacket. The, the whole idea of a jacket. It's not what you want. You want a Patagonia. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Right. Love it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, this is great too. She talks about how she approaches bro marketing and stiff cultures. Uh, here's, uh, uh, an example of uh, bro marketing where not targeting anyone direct, but mocking aggressive sales behavior. Uh, she gives some great examples here. Uh, on uh, on on aggressive sales pitches and direct messages, overhyped success stories. I see this all the time on X, mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Ah, I'm making a hundred thousand dollars a month. Do this. Right, it's such BS. Oh, oh, that's like, I mean, just what you do may not is not going to work necessarily for everybody else. You know, so yes. Well, if you're making a hundred thousand bucks a month just by on sitting on their LinkedIn, what are you still doing on LinkedIn making a hundred thousand bucks a month? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> right. No different back in the olden days when you open up the back of the comics or the magazines and they had all those yeah. ads that you can mm -hmm. buy this or buy that, right? Nemesis talks about Nemesis strategy versus bro marketing, uh, the tactics and use. Uh, she talks about corporate culture, mocking certain ways of working to attract people who want to think differently. So again, I've, I've been talking a plentiful about remote work versus re about work in the office, right? Mm -hmm. So I will certainly mock this idea of why do you have to go to the office? You can get results yeah. done anywhere. It's a position that we own here in the in the in the business athlete performance lab. Um, but she talks about <clears throat> she talks about Nicole. The nemesis strategy requires careful execution as it involves challenging existing players, sometimes leading to retaliatory actions. It's that idea of courting controversy. Mm -hmm. right? But the desired result is to gravitate towards more people who love the edge. So, for example. In our positioning here, I'm challenging those that are going to the office and saying, hey, why don't you join Keith and Nicole in Bapple HQ to get mm -hmm. your results, you know, the hybrid right. workspace, right? So just positioning a little differently. Um, and then she goes, you know, when she talks about uh, the nemesis strategy, typical marketing on LinkedIn looks like this. It's pretty fluffy, mm -hmm. right? So how do you create something that has impact? So... She talks about content strategy, scheduling and posting, what you see, uh, how she puts it all together. And then, yeah, example for content. So treat your carousels as a long piece of content, easy to recycle. Like you look at this one picture, long format, think once, distribute it 10 times. Like she makes this one 44 page document, but out of these 44 pages, tons of reusable content. Yeah. True. Exceptional, exceptional, exceptional. And you'll see here her example for scheduling. Like Nation, she lays it all out for you here. 
absolutely lays it all out. The entire way to build your build your brand, build your business uh, on LinkedIn, uh, brought to you by Sarah, Sarah Sandra McCall. So I invite you to. Um, and the last question before we wrap it up here is wrong question. You already failed. If you have a copy mentality, you will once begin to become a copy. Her point is, uh, if you think that what she put together is just a carousel, it's not. She's put a lot of thought, strategy into yeah. it. And there is, what do I have and possess that nobody else has? So any of you that are going, okay, I'm just going to copy this. You're probably making a mistake because it's not, gonna, it's not going to work for you the same way that it worked for Sandra because of all the strategy they wanted to put it together, which gives her the confidence to share it. She's right. like, yeah, I'll share this because you guys don't know how to, you don't know how I've done it all behind the scenes. Yeah. Right. So we'll share that with Nation, uh, how Sandra McCall built her LinkedIn audience by a thousand followers in one week. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to go find her. I'm going yes. <clears throat> to go find her. That sounded weird. We're going to get her on to the show coming up here. All right. So let's take a minute break. And then when we come back, I'm going to set up the next segment and we are going to talk about grace in the workplace. And we're going to talk about assumptions meetings. Have you ever had an assumption meeting before? No, I've never even heard that term. It, neither did I until I met somebody a few years back who invited me to an assumptions meeting. And I'm going to teach you about that coming up in a minute. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's do that. We're going to do one minute nation. We will be right back. All right, welcome back. Keith Nicole here. Mornings in the lab, in the Business Athlete Performance Lab on a Tuesday morning, week three, show 12. Nicole Bernard, what do you got planned today? Mm, I don't know. Uh, Good answer. I love that answer because you're honest. Sometimes we don't know, do we? No. I think, yeah, I don't think I have any meetings today. So I was going to try running again, see how that goes. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's kind of the only thing I have planned. I know what you can do. I got something for you today. You can get that uh, Bapple HQ Roam app downloaded on your yes. phone. Okay. Get that up in there, and um, maybe I'll have some time to get in there with you today as well. Uh, yeah. I have a meeting with a some local business folks about uh, there's this continued discussion, and you know, you know, you and I have talked about a little bit off the air here, but uh, you know, this idea of creating these live streaming shows for local markets, yeah. uh, uh, in a new different way that i that traditional media was created a certain way that 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 infrastructure is currently unraveling really quickly and there's new ways to distribute this content like we're doing it so i'm meeting with somebody today to talk about that but we'll leave that oh, there that's awesome. that's yes that yes that yeah. Yeah, i will 100 percent. yeah okay so let's uh we, last segment of the show here we got a 15 minutes to wrap the show up here uh i want to talk about an assumptions meeting that i had with somebody and then i thought we could wrap the show up with some some tips tips golden golden nuggets on bringing grace to the workspace yeah i had a great chat yesterday with dr S uh stevie sorry. rayvon <laughs> i'm sorry dr stevie don carter it is i yes thank you stevie rayvon now i'll never forget dr stevie don carter <laughs> so uh and considering i was reading an article this morning on how beyonce is uh trying to disrupt the country music business with her she already has she has yes exactly that's an interesting story there mm -hmm. yeah. all the all the layers to that mm -hmm. the history to that there's it's kind of crazy anyways okay so dr stevie don carter and i talked yesterday about assumptions meetings and i was in a meeting with 
a, a number um, a couple years back with somebody who was like, hey, Keith, let's go to an assumptions meeting. I'm like, assumptions meeting? He goes, yeah, it's the meeting where we, you and I go to where we erase all the assumptions about each other. Because while I have worked with you and have known you for a number of years, I haven't really worked with you like one-on-one. -on -one. So, and neither have you with me. So I'm suspecting you probably have a number of assumptions about me. I'm like, yeah, I do. He's like, well, let's go to the meeting. Let's put them on the table and get rid of them all. I'm like, okay. So check this out. It's awesome. Let's just check this out here. I'm going to go, uh, boop, 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 boop. We're going to do a share screen. No. Uh, yes, here we go. I was at a meeting a couple of years back, Stevie, and I'll never forget the gentleman. He says, we just started working together. We, we had worked in the same organization for a long time, but we had never worked together. Okay, yeah. He's like, hey, Keith, let's get together for a meeting. Let's have an assumptions meeting. Yeah, I, like, oh, <laughs> I love that. I was like, an assumptions meeting? He goes, yeah, it's the meeting where we sit across from each other and we wipe out all the assumptions about each other. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, fuck, that's brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. Like, oh, there's awesome. a bunch of assumptions that you have about me. There's a bunch of assumptions that I have about you. Not right or wrong, but let's go have a meeting, have an honest human-to-human -human conversation, remove all the assumptions and move forward. I was like, Walter, that is I was shaking, Walter. That is, and thank you for teaching me that, Walter. Yeah, that for sure. Freaking brilliant because that for I had known him for a long time, Stevie, but I hadn't worked with him. So I had these assumptions about him. And we all do. And and it's so, it is so freeing oh, to just never. get rid of all that and just know the other person and not have to yes. have any of that in your, like in your brain or in your body. Yes. yes. Oh, so freeing. I love that. So that was my assumptions meeting that I had with Walter. Now, have you been to one of those before? No, like I said, I've never even heard of that before just now but, but i love it you're pretty brilliant hey eh? mm -hmm. it makes total sense like it does it does so so if you're if you're listening to this right now you're thinking what does that mean to me well if you're if you're starting to work with somebody or you're or you have worked with somebody for a while and you um don't know them or are wanting to know them uh it is a great way to uh alleviate any assumptions by sitting down and openly saying hey so nicole i thought i thought this about you no that's actually not Oh, mm -hmm. so yeah. I invite nation today. Consider yourself, go to a meeting with somebody and say, I have these thoughts about you. Have the courage to sit down with somebody and say, yeah. is this really what I believe it to be true? So mm -hmm. I love that. And it can go back to what we talked about a while ago. And I think you shared that too, like how to be a better communicator, you know? So if you need to like re yes. look at that and then go into the meeting. Yeah. It does. It absolutely does. Because what you're saying and what I'm hearing might be two different things. Yeah. Oh, totally. <clears throat> right. So asking for clarification. Did I, did I hear you correctly in the call or am I assuming this? Oh no, Keith, it's this. Oh, okay. Right. Yet yeah. we're so quick as humans just to accept and not, not want to question. Maybe it's because we're not comfortable or we don't maybe have the words in our head. So again, I'm just, I'm offering up this morning that if you, if you find yourself thinking, assuming something about somebody, invite them to a meeting and say, Hey, I have some assumptions about you that I want to confirm or want to dismiss or at least clarify them. Yeah. I love that. Just think of all like the confusion that could be saved from those, you know, <laughs> like, right. <clears throat> oh, the confusion would be incredible. Incredible. Mm -hmm. So then we also talked about Nicole uh, on live in the lab yesterday about the importance of grace. She wrote, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Dr. Stevie Don Carter wrote an article back in, in, in the 1800s, I joked with her because it was written in 2018. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the reasons I booked her on the show is because this article struck me, which was the importance of grace in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And it, it just seems to me that this, this article was written before the pandemic. And since the pandemic has happened, <laughs> grace in many instances has gone all out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm offering this as a reminder to everybody that if you're finding yourself going into a situation today, there's a way to have grace about it. Uh, without assumptions and clarity. So let's have a look at this piece where we talked about the importance of grace uh, in the workplace. And I hope this is a good reminder for everybody to get their day going as well. Boom, boom. So you pulled out in 2018, which is actually in today's world, it seems like it was a thousand years ago. 
And and this article struck me because it's still, still, I don't believe used enough in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And it's that one word that you referenced, <laughs> grace. Yeah. The importance of grace in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And I know that as I've been starting the lab, I've really embraced that word mm -hmm. because when you embrace it, intentionally embrace it, Mm -hmm. holy smokes does it ever give the person you're communicating with a lot of leeway to be a human being yeah. and to give you grace back and then magic starts happening yet you talk about in this article 8,000 years ago that grace has been gone from the world and we're trying to find its way back in again talk about grace and the importance of grace in the workplace Dr. Carter yeah so I think it really comes to that idea of humanness and yeah. people making mistakes Mm -hmm. I think that we spent a lot of time as a, specifically in the United States as a country and as a society going with this whole, we have to be perfect thing. I have to say the perfect things. I have to wear the perfect things. I have to be perfect. And so now there's this whole, like, let's throw out perfectionism and be authentic, which I think is great. Yes. But from a communication standpoint, to me, grace is the ability to sit across from somebody, let them say something that bugs you. Let them say something mm -hmm. that triggers you, that gets to you. And instead of defending, instead of attacking, being able to sit there and go, I just want to make sure I understand what you meant by that comment. Yeah. Not what you said, but what you meant. Because sometimes those are two different things because we've all said things we yes. didn't use, Oh, right? man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, but I think being able to sit across from somebody and just give them that grace, give them the ability to have a do-over call people on something and say, Hey, like, I feel like your body language, your tone of voice, something in here is telling me that you're upset with me. You're mad at me. You're unhappy with my performance. I just want to really understand. Mm -hmm. and, and how can we have that conversation? Because what I noticed when I started doing that, when I started asking people for clarity mm -hmm. around their meaning, I started to notice most people, their emotions, their facial expressions, those kinds of nonverbal things that were happening had nothing to do with me. They were not about the current moment. It was something that had happened to them earlier in the day that they were bringing in with them. Yes. And so once I asked them that and I said, yes. Hey, I just kind of feel like you're feeling a little, uh, you feel a little, little short with me or maybe like you're rushing me out of here. Is everything okay? Did I do something wrong? Oh God, no, it's because I had this meeting before here and I'm just, I'm stressed out over it. Okay, great. So it's not me. Mm. Nothing I did, right? And mm. But it was amazing to me how many times I had left meetings and rooms feeling like it was all my fault. They hated me. They didn't like me. They were upset with me. And I was taking that emotional baggage with me, right? And, and going about my day. When in reality, once I started asking people, I was like, oh, actually, most of it isn't about me. It's something that happened earlier. It's that they're just stressed about something else or they're just not feeling well today. Or, you know, they, they had a rough night and they're just still yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, like, I don't care, but it's not that. But grace is being able to sit across from somebody and go, you know what, I'm going to let them try that again because my guess is they didn't mean that as harshly or as, you know, brusquely as they did, right? Oh, hey, in my experience, I, a lot of times they don't. I... I'm the first person who will openly admit to you in the audience that I have been caught in that situation many times. Yeah. I'm enthusiastic. I'm a communicator. Mm -hmm. I will, I'm trying to get better at sometimes I'm saying something that is not really what I meant. So uh, I know I can come across as aggressive or brash or let's go, yeah. let's go. Right. Uh, confident. And sometimes it's not what I mean. So it's slowing down. Yeah intentionally sitting with you and saying, no, here's actually what I meant, Stevie. Here's really what I meant. It's actually not you. It's all me. Oh, right. oh, and I get it, Keith. Right. It is so often that. And I think that's why grace is so important mm. because we need to be able to sit across from a person and go, maybe they need a do over. Maybe they need another yes. day. Maybe that's not, maybe that didn't come out great, but let's not hold it against them for the next 10 years of their life. Yes, yes. Right? Like it was, yeah. it was one moment. Um, and I really think that's something we need more of. I, I think we need more of that everywhere in the world these days. But I, I think especially at work, 
people have a lot on their plates. They are overwhelmed. They are stressed out. They are burnt out. It's okay if, if they cut you a little short one day, just ask them about it. Or even better, if you don't feel like asking them about it because you don't want to get confrontational, why don't you just leave the room and instead of being upset with them, go, I hope their day gets better. Yeah. Why don't you say something nice about it, right? Like put into well, the universe, I hope their day gets better because it seems like maybe today they're not having a great day. Well, that's, you know? and that's important. I've had to take some time to learn that too which is, oh, why is Stevie being so crotchety today? Well, actually, maybe she had a really bad night last night or this morning, or maybe she got into a bad car accident. Maybe her life is really crappy right now, and she's and, and we don't know why. So let's just, this moment in a package of millions of moments yes. is one moment. One moment. Let's look at the, let's judge Stevie amongst her grace, amongst all the other. Right. This moment is a package within a million moments. So when we find ourselves across from somebody and we're in a difficult situation, we need to find ourselves to grab some awareness and recognize there's more going on than just what's happening in front of us right now. Mm -hmm. Totally. I think that's such a great way to like wrap up this show. Just something to like leave on, you know, um, just. Yes. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to leave here today because if you know you yourself, Nicole, find yourself going through all the well, you you got nothing to do today. You're going for a run, so uh, <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> no, nothing at all. No, not a mom. Don't have responsibilities at all anywhere in your life. Just gonna get off the show, go for a run, go to bed, and get up tomorrow and just lollygag through life, right? <laughs> not. Uh, no, I, I think you're right, Nicole. If if we can leave some a nugget for the nation today, which is if you find yourself going into a situation, whether it's a meeting, whether it's a personal situation recognize that that moment is part of a collection of millions of moments and don't measure that person or that situation based on what's happening right there. Yeah. <clears throat> I love it too. I love how that she pointed out too, you know, not taking like per person, like personal baggage of what you might think someone's saying, because I think yes. that can weigh on us a lot and a bunch of those starts to drag you down. So again, just yeah, let it go. Say a little nice thought about them and then keep going, yeah, which I think is hard for us as humans. Cause we're like, uh, you know, like they annoyed me or they whatever, but yes. learning that skill to like, let it go. Um, yes. So, yeah. And, and we sometimes want to have the last word, right? It's like, yeah. oh, no, she said this, I got to say this. Mm -hmm. Right. I've learned the power of just not having a word and just walking away. Yeah. Right. Totally. All right, Nicole Bernard, speaking of walking away, it's time for us to get out of here. Uh, yeah. Dropping up. You got a day of nothing today. I got a day. It's legs day today. So uh, let's Who are you talking to later. And yeah, I'll just, I'll watch while I eat bonbons later on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to know what Nicole is doing, just find her on Instagram story. She'll be just hanging out, chilling out, doing nothing. So to those of you that want to do nothing today, you have a partner in nothing is Nicole Bernard. Cause she is lazy as ass. <laughs> We know she's not lazy as ass. Uh, I have Alicia Butler Pierre, as we said, she's the founder and CEO of Equilibria, yes. podcaster, top 50 global operational Alexis. Joining me today live in the lab at noon. You can join in here at lunchtime uh, and then obviously on demand along the way. And then I'm off today to go watch Carter's last hockey game along with some business meetings to continue building the Business Athlete Performance Lab. Uh, I'm dropping a post today shortly after eight o'clock, Nicole, around the Business Athlete Performance Lab headquarters inviting people in if you want to have it if you're wondering what Bapple hq is the world's first hybrid creator space can knock on my door all right let's get out of here bernard hey good luck to carter thank you we will see you tomorrow and we'll talk to you later all right Bye. beautiful see you guys